The interview is being conducted for the Veterans History Project for the Library of Congress. The veteran's name is Vessel Gentry. He was born on January 12, 1923. He served in World War II and he achieved the rank of Private First Class. We are recording this on January 18, 2014. I am William Richter and I am conducting the interview. No relation. Thank you, Mr. Gentry, for sitting down and talking with us today. Okay. Um, if you'd just like to start off with your childhood and your family, uh, where, were you, where were you born? Born in Jackson County, Tennessee. Okay. And, uh, I went to school in Jackson County and uh, the last two years, when I was junior and senior, my daddy moved up to Clay County, and uh, so I graduated in high school there, and quickly because I got out of high school, and Uncle Sam was waiting for me, and, and mm -hmm. I went from school to the, to, uh, the military? Yeah. And were you... Uh, drafted or enlisted? Drafted. Drafted? Okay. Yeah. And um, my understanding is that you went into the Army? Right. Okay. Would you like to talk about some of your um, your training and what your experience was like um, in your first few weeks being in the military? Well, that's, uh, of course, they want to put you in good shape, you know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, they put us through all of the, the uh, required by the United States Army, mm -hmm. and uh, they, we had eight weeks of basics, mm -hmm. and we failed the basics and had to take it all over. <laughs> what was that like? <laughs> Was it you or the whole unit or what? The whole unit. Mm. Wow. Okay. So what were some of the things that you had to do? What What was it like going through basic training? Well, first thing, we had to put on a 50-pound backpack, and we carried half of the tent, and you had to have a buddy to furnish the other half. Mm -hmm. And uh, we uh, would uh, help one another, and through all that basic training and, and stuff, had a, there was two driver, uh, two drivers in a section, and in a medical attachment and drafted in the army mm -hmm. and uh, we did all of the required by the army to get you in shape mm -hmm. and uh, we we'd had got up and had Force march of had to march 25 miles, 50 pound field pack on your back, and mm -hmm. and uh, then uh, when we got through the bait, the training we got, it was a lot harder on you than being in combat but of course they had, want you to be ready in case we didn't get cut off one time one thing that uh, we was in went down Louisiana maneuvers and uh, they outflanked us and across the river from uh, Uh, I've got the name of that river. 
it's a, it's a line between uh, Mississippi. Uh, Louisiana and Arkansas. Yeah, that's Louisiana. a red. It's a red river. Okay. Louisiana. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And uh, we got down there, and they come around, and I was a driver, and they'd sent me back to headquarters section to get the mail that day and they'd outflanked us and come around and out come back around and mm -hmm. I just drove right into it <laughs> and uh, they got us uh, Turned out I, I better than the ones that didn't get captured mm -hmm. because they kept me a prisoner <laughs> till ten o'clock, mm -hmm. and ten o'clock why they turned me loose and and I went to our kitchen. It raining, just putting down the rain, oh, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I I was uh, we turned out that I wound up um, the kitchen had a, a big tent, you know, <laughs> and uh, I wound up sleeping in. The, kitchen and the rest of them was out there marching mm -hmm. trying to get out flanked you know right they was marching in the rain and I was laying in the kitchen <laughs> in the dry yes sir <laughs> and, uh, and then when they turned me loose well, I just, uh, well, the programs, they, they had people that lined it up and everything, and the maneuvers were supposed to be as near like as they could make it, you know, in case mm -hmm. things like that happened in combat, mm -hmm. which they never did. Mm -hmm. But it was good training in case you did. Okay. And uh, we got uh, all of that what turned out to my advantage was that uh, I was laying in the kitchen tent sleeping and they was out there marching in the rain. Yeah. <laughs> all, yeah. All night nearly. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, after basic training, where did you go after that? Basic training, we went to maneuvers. We went into training after basic. Okay. And I forgot what they called them trainings. Okay. And uh, so you did some more training. Okay. <laughs> yeah, more training. Okay. Basics is, is what everybody done, and okay. and uh, what we went into is what we did as a unit, mm -hmm. as a part of the army, our job, and uh, we we got uh, all of that experience and everything that. Luckily, I, I didn't need a lot of that, but mm -hmm. it's good to know in case you did. And uh, we got over in France where this year tells us we landed at Cherbourg. It took us 15 days to get over there. And uh, 
we landed at Cherbourg, <laughs> the English Channel, and we was the first outfit that landed there direct from the United States. The rest of them had been having to go to camp mm -hmm. across the English Channel, you know, in England. Right, to prepare. And uh, we we landed and went in and it was, was they went in as far as it could go. The boat that we was on is about water, about knee deep when we Got out the end of the plank. And, and where did you and, where did you go in France? Well, we we got over. Our, we had to wait two weeks to get our equipment and stuff. Okay. So we stayed. They built. We built back back in the hedgerows mm -hmm. there at France. Mm -hmm. Waited two weeks, and, and every day is that same old stuff you have in a hut. Two, three, four. Put <laughs> two, three, four, and all of that, waiting for our equipment to get over there. Mm -hmm. And when it got over there, well, well, they notified about four o'clock in the evening to come down and get me. I drove a jeep, mm -hmm. and. Uh, after I got the jeep and everything, we found out when you go to carrying a letter casualty by hand, that gets into work. So they sent me back to ordinance. Mm -hmm. Took me three days and nights back there and made ambulance out of the jeep. Mm -hmm. I put two letter casualties on it, and of course walking wounded just wherever they could get on. Mm -hmm. And uh, at times it was pretty rough and mm -hmm. at times it wasn't too bad. But uh, the training was worse than actually combat mm -hmm. as far as physically and, and all of that. But you have to go through that training in case you get caught and captured or something like mm -hmm. that. Sure. But uh, we got, uh, well, it was uh, equipment when it got over there. Mm -hmm. uh, Four o'clock in the evening, they told me to come down and get my Jeep. The every driver had to do his own mechanical work, and I got my Jeep and the float in the carburetor was sticking, mm -hmm. and the gas was just pouring out <laughs> carburetor and I oh had boy. <laughs> get See, that all fixed. And I, so you had to know how to work on your Jeep too, let alone yeah, just I, drive it. I cleaned it and then when I put it back together I oiled it, you know. Mm -hmm. They put that stuff on them to when coming across Protect against the salt, mm -hmm. salt water. Okay. And uh, we had to, we had to do our own. And about like I say, about four o'clock in the evening, down that float was sticking in the carburetor. Mm -hmm. and I, I took that all part and cleaned it out and I had an air tank and would uh, get in there and when you got down into your carburetor a little bit I used this air to blow 
get any of that salt water and stuff out where mm -hmm. it would run. It run pretty rough when it got mm -hmm. over there. And okay. we had to do that ourselves. Okay. And uh, we, I got uh, the uh, running and everything pretty good. So but where did you go next? After the equipment came in, where did you, um, you got your Jeep and they where, had us, where They headed us go? up to the front lines. Okay. And what was that like? Well, of course, I was a driver and, and the foot troops, mm -hmm. they put them on a made out train mm -hmm. of uh, like all stock on and stuff like that uh -huh. and they put them on the train and I went in with a convoy okay and I was the medics and I was the next to the last vehicle in the convoy okay and uh, they would uh, the ordnance truck or uh, the mechanics okay. and everything, they was one behind me. I was next to the last one in the convoy. Okay. And we went through one one place that the Germans didn't tire up at all was Paris, Paris, France. Uh -huh. They left it just like it was. It, it wasn't. But them small towns, they didn't have nothing left in them. A lot of, them. Uh -huh. and we done a lot of it. You see, fighting and mm -hmm. artillery mm -hmm. and planes. Mm -hmm. P forty sevens was uh, was help us out on the front lines. Okay. And uh, they would, uh, when we had to, these P-47s would help out the infantry on the front lines and uh, we could Uh, sent these P forty sevens to help us out, and they, and they got to the the, the the line before they thought, because the orders that they had got and everything back where they was stationed, and everything we was farther front than what it was. Okay, and uh, they come they come in. Uh, and one evening, uh, they uh, come in with these B-47s, and they got down, and they hit this uh, plane that was helping the, the infantry mm -hmm. and uh, they began to holler, get out of the way, get out of the way and I looked around and mm -hmm. he was a coming, he got to the front lines, he was down too low and uh -huh. they hit some part about the plane that it, it crashed? Crashed. Oh wow! And okay. uh, they, they had these trees all along the highways, and they was about twelve, fifteen feet apart. Mm -hmm. And uh, he then and he he didn't get his wheels down. He bellied. Mm -hmm. 
and he hit the, these trees that were they had along the highway. Okay. And when Wayne, when the Wayne, uh, Wayne hit the tree, hit broke one of the wings off. The mm -hmm. ones that hit the tree, and it just turned up and went to rolling. Oh wow! And yeah. and I was shaving, and I was using the rear view mirror on the Jeep mm -hmm. for a mirror to shave by. And The plane caught on fire after it it rolled down, and mm -hmm. we run down there to see if we could help, and maybe which we did mm -hmm. made a survivor. When it hit those trees on and broke that wing off, why? Well, he fell out down about a hundred yards past us, okay. where I was at, and we went down there and he had uh, fell out and he, when he hit the ground it was muddy mm -hmm. and everything and, and this left leg Mm -hmm. I had a compound fracture oh boy. right here, and that bone and everything was just stuck down in the mud. Ooh. And the other guy went down there with me, and I said, "Well, get her over here and help me." And I got hold of him under his arms and mm -hmm. pulled him up. And he pulled that leg up out of the mud. Mm -hmm. We kind of took her ten tent washed the mud off mm -hmm. and everything and we got uh, that straightened out and I wondered how he turned out. We mm -hmm. we gave him first aid and stuff like that mm -hmm. and his buddy had it's he landed on the highway, got a place he come in there to check out and see what happened and everything. Okay. And uh, they were, uh, well, I can't think of the nation over there that Americans had took them and was making pilots out of them. Poland? What? Poland? Yeah, that was Poland. it. Poland. And uh, we got uh, we got him out and sent him back to the field hospital. I never did Mm -hmm. And I'm having no more contact with him. I don't know how how he turned out. Okay. But we put uh, on that army leg splint on him. Mm -hmm. Comes up here to the hips, and and, and then it goes out, and, and it was a compound fracture. Mm -hmm. The bone shot out, yeah. and it was in the mud, mm -hmm. and. Uh, Cleaned that up and done first aid on him, and mm -hmm. and uh, they, uh, like I said, after he left the front lines, or I, I never did know what happened. I mean, I don't know how he turned out. Evidently, it's all right. Or okay. Generally, if we if we lost one, they generally let us know it. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, he, that was who they were, they were Poland's. Mm -hmm. Okay. He had trouble, he got in, 
then the French, about all of them spoke French. Okay. I didn't know a word of French, mm -hmm. but I learned yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff like that. Okay. Uh, but you're in a mess when you you get uh, you don't know what they're saying. They don't know what you're saying. That's right. All right. Yeah. And that that gets you. Be quite a problem. Uh, uh, Max and I. Max Smith was my lieutenant. Oh, when we always would be the first ones in the town, and we'd locate a building to put the aid station in. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> we had Red Cross banners on our arms, and and I flew a big Red Cross flag on the jeep front okay. bumper. Okay, and. Uh, we moved into town. It was about oh, I was about in the middle of the night, and we got in place. And like I say, we try and pick out a place. He's like me. He didn't know a word of French either, mm -hmm. and they finally the motion, you know, for. We'd point to the Red Cross we had on our arm and everything. We wanted a place where we could put up the first aid station. Okay. And they <laughs> carried us down there and made motion, you know, for us. And we went down there and they carried us down. Went in up the stairs there. And uh, <laughs> Max looked at me and I looked at him and we didn't, and she put her hands down, you know, like that, she said, sloppy, sloppy, that's sleep. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, we weren't looking for a place to sleep. Right. <laughs> and, uh, but you, when you don't know the their language, you're in a mess mm -hmm. on both sides. <laughs> so did you eventually find somewhere to, to, to set up camp? and? Yeah. Okay. And what did yeah. you do after that? Well, after that, we, uh, of course, moved the aid station in, set it up, and got ready. And the first thing I did when we moved forward like that, okay. I'd go to every platoon CP in a battalion. Okay. In a battalion you had four uh, rifle companies and heavy weapons company and uh, they, uh, I'd go to every platoon CP Command posts, okay. what that is, and uh, we would uh, so when they got casters at night and everything, okay. I know where to go, you know. Right. Okay. Like I said, it was three rifle companies and a heavy weapons company and a battalion, and we just had one uh, battalion aid station for the whole uh, for the whole uh, four companies that were there? Yeah. Okay. The whole battalion. And the word finally came to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we had to know that way at night when it, when it Find out the platoon CP mm -hmm. and the litter bearers would bring the casualty to the CP, the platoon CP, mm -hmm. 
that way all we had to do was t tell me what platoon it was and, mm -hmm. and you I, pick them up. I knew where they had. Of course we had maps all the time we had to go by okay. and where we could go find them or get them back, take care of them. And I've I've fixed them up, but nobody they were fixed in bad shape as mm -hmm. I did. I got one one night. A guy got a direct hit with eighty eight. That's our artillery shell. Okay. Blow both legs off at his knees and the flesh off up to here. Wow. And I gave him a shot of penicillin, I mean, a morphine. Morphine. Okay. And uh, put a tourniquet around mm -hmm. both legs. And we had to write out a tag and put on him, tell him that the time that you put that tourniquet on. Mm -hmm. Close it off, cause you had to open it up and let the squirt blood through two or three times right. every fifteen minutes. Okay. Keep from hemorrhaging. And, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And that when you had to put that tourniquet on it and everything, and then, and then as it went through the channels going back to the hospital. The, Every 15 minutes, they had to loosen that and let squirt blood through two or three mm -hmm. times and then tighten it back up. Mm -hmm. And that had to happen every 15 minutes. Okay. So they, they, everything, I, I thought, did pretty good considering mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. You didn't have all this stuff you got nowadays, you just had to... Do with what you had? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was... use your common sense a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. Okay. So where did you go um, after this post? Um, did you move forward? Yeah, we moved forward as, okay. as the battle went forward. Okay. And. Uh, Sometimes so uh, the aid station would get three or four miles behind the front lines, but as we went on, the the headquarters of my uh, Uh, medical attachment. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we had three rifle companies and a heavy weapons company okay. in a battalion. Okay. And, and we had the one aid station for the whole, whole battalion. Okay. Done. Did you uh, did you you made it into Germany, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, this thing here. To, we was first and fired into Germany. Okay. First ones crossed the Rhine River, and the Rhine River and the Saar River run together. Okay. The Sargi mines. And we was there at Christmas, and. Uh, And the Germans made a mistake. Sometimes they'd send in artillery every three minutes, every five minutes, every ten minutes. And it didn't take you long. You just look at your watch and you had barrage come in and in the towns and stuff, mm -hmm. the buildings when you're down on the streets. Okay. 
protect you from artillery and stuff unless it happened. Like I said, where that Ryan and Sour River forked there, right over on that point, they sent them up a machine gun and the bridge that went across Sour River there was, uh, they was, every three minutes they would open up with this machine guns mm -hmm. and spray across and the tracers you see that and you could see then and you catch on to how often they was shelling and you mm -hmm. stayed off of that bridge until mm -hmm. <laughs> at that time again. And that was probably one of the few bridges left. I know that the Germans destroyed a lot of the bridges. Well, yeah, when we didn't outsmart them, and mm -hmm. we move in so fast in time, they'd lose. Well, we hadn't been in uh, too long, so we had three guys. We moved and we was back in France then mm -hmm. and they had these uh, churches mm -hmm. and they'd have the church steeple sticking up you know mm -hmm. well I, I moved up the aid station and all of that went and we would go with the battalion headquarters and uh, they would, they would, uh, every time they moved, well, we moved, mm -hmm. and, uh, and your communication is very, very vital in war. Okay. If you don't know where your friendly troops are, and, uh, we was moving this town, and, and I told them, I said, now, if you just wait here, I said, I'll come back to you, and there was three villages over across this uh, high ground and stuff, mm -hmm. and it was all cleared, and you got over there and up through there, they, they had to, three church steeples mm -hmm. and uh, I told them I'd come back and get them no you can see the teeple sticking up mm -hmm. as a corporal and two privates okay I told them you know I said you just wait here and I'll come back. Well, now we'll walk. They got their, there was three church steeples over there, up through there, I suppose. Okay. Over there they don't live out on the farm like we do in the United States. <laughs> They'd, uh, they'd uh, live close to the town. Yeah, make right. village. Right. They call them villages, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'd uh, make that and everything, and told them where it was going. And I went and when I moved to aid station mm -hmm. and everything. I was going to come back and get him. No, we'll see. Well, he got mixed up mm -hmm. and he went to the wrong village. And he didn't know it that the Germans was digging in and they walked up right on the Germans. <laughs> and the German looked up and him. They turned and started running back. And he shot one of them through the shoulder, mm -hmm. and uh, 
that I wound up then he he got everything under control and just little mistakes like that sometimes cost you a life. Mm -hmm. But they they are always pretty nice. Mm -hmm. The Germans I picked up a little I learned it was snowing day and that old German he's trying to tell me snow in German is schnee. So you're talking with the German? Yeah. Okay. And see he kept saying schnee, schnee and I answer back snowing, snowing and <laughs> and you're just up against it when you can't mm -hmm. communicate. Mm -hmm. So what was it like um, having the enemy right there and just talking to them? You know, what was that like well, interacting? The thing of it is you got to pay more attention where you're going mm -hmm. and not get in a position like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, that time uh, They had uh, captured three of us, or, and we got them back. Mm -hmm. And they said, uh, by the time they get down to the bottom of this hill, the road, said the Americans would be shelling the top of the hill. <laughs> and they didn't have vehicles like we had to mm -hmm. take the prisoners back. And they just walked them, mm -hmm. and uh, they uh, when you got them moving that way, you want to stay this close on them as you could. Don't give them time to dig in mm -hmm. foxholes or nothing like that. So you're moving through the villages um, uh, with the Germans, and you're chasing them. Uh, so, so what's what's next? Um, what's what next? Happened? Well, we just have to wait till you. They set a time for an attack. Okay. And it generally was seven o'clock in the morning. Right and early. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, when. Uh, we go into these attacks. Mm -hmm. That's when you crawl out of your foxhole and start meeting them face to face. Mm -hmm. And that's when we get the biggest casualties, you see. Mm -hmm. And that's my job. Like I said, we took that Jeep back to ordinance and made work to get two litter casters on that Jeep. Mm -hmm. Took the spare tire off and Hung it over here on the right side mm -hmm. and run that out the back okay. and run braces down to the little bumpers on mm -hmm. the Jeep and bolt and that run that angle iron, put angle iron on is about that high. Okay. And then you you get jet where It hold two litters. You put it a litter on there and had one up here right behind, come right back behind the driver's seat and run out the back. And then they had, they fixed a, ordinance fixed a, a T bolt where you could turn a, had a slide about that long, mm -hmm. and then have stirrups on them, uh, on those, uh, 
What's the word I want? It won't come to me. That's okay. And you got casualty on. Okay. And uh, they would uh, of course where they they tell you at night if you you're gonna stay a day or two mm -hmm. sometimes we'd get too far ahead we'd have to wait for supplies to catch up with us. Right. Okay. Gas and stuff. Mm -hmm. Medicine and stuff that uh, had big, great big. There was three of them with medicine. Mm -hmm. That's what I had to okay. move up. And every time we moved up. I, okay. So you're moving through Germany, right? Yeah. Okay. So um, let's move a little further. Um, what else would you like to talk about going through Germany? Were there any big experiences that you had um, going through that you'd like to talk about? Well, it was, we get pretty tight squat sometimes, mm -hmm. and uh, but they we always come out, we didn't have to about the airplanes getting bombed with them. Mm -hmm. Well, we had a air superiority. They'd send one over at night, mm -hmm. about nine o'clock. Okay. We called him Bed Check Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> and they get down pretty low. You could see them clear night. And they, Good every time. Mm -hmm. We went and we was we was in Seventh Army, which was down the southern part. Okay. And after after we got so far over, we had to, France had a little army, little army that they had blow us. Mm -hmm. Well, we'd get in and get everything to care of. Okay. Well, the France, when they'd take a town, they'd turn on the lights and get the snops and everything else, mm -hmm. the strong drink. Mm -hmm. We didn't. We didn't do that. Okay. So I see you moved down through Germany and towards Austria. Is that? Yeah. Okay. Went to so, the Brenner Pass, yeah. sir. Yeah. Okay. So talk talk to me a little bit about um, what what was going on there um, when you were going through Austria. Well, when we was going from Germany to Austria. We had to go through the Brenner Pass. Okay, and what was that like? Well, that was pretty rough. Okay. They, we got up there, and the mountains come down here, you see, and mm -hmm. uh, low place in the mountains, and that's what they call the Brenner Pass. Okay. And uh, we uh, got one place and they blowed the bridge. The Germans blowed the bridge and we couldn't get across the river. Okay. That and we had to come back and went up through this Brenner Pass and uh, we got uh, got Stalled up there, 
Okay. And uh, the German Mountain Division been in there, and they waited until we got the biggest bunch they could get in this pass okay. before they opened up fire and where they could kill more. Mm -hmm. And we, it didn't work like they thought it was going to work. We didn't get too many in there and everything. Uh -huh. and, uh, and what happened? They, well, two of their snap shooters mm -hmm. climbed up the top of big pines and, mm -hmm. and they was going to really kill a bunch of us. Mm -hmm. And they they fired and the air boys, they looked around and saw them up there and they shot them out like shooting squirrel out. Kill two. I saw uh -huh. two roll down, hit the ground, mm -hmm. killed them. But uh, okay, yeah, okay. You had to kill, keep from getting killed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you're moving through the pass and um, almost to Italy, right? Almost. To yeah, Italy. that's where they come down. You know, and you you have a in the mountain, you get a. I got. This was named Brenner Pass. Okay. I don't know and. and what happened when you got towards towards Italy? Um, after you made it through the pass, what happened? Well, we made it through once. Got over there, and they'd blowed the bridge across the river, so we had to turn around and come back through there. Okay. And and go around. And uh, we put that litter, we'll carry two litters on that Jeep. Mm -hmm. And I got back down to the highway where we was coming around. And here was a man coming down, a soldier. Okay. Had his mess kit, so he's fixing to eat chow. And uh, two and a half ton was pulling up, and you know, when they're pulling on the highway, that bumper will get across the center line there mm -hmm. for a two and a half ton truck. Mm -hmm. And uh, we. This guy's coming down to the other. He was, mm -hmm. had his mess kit in his hand, and uh, and this two and a half ton truck was coming down the road, and, and I had to get over clear against the curb, keeping mm -hmm. hitting him. Mm -hmm. And this guy was a walking down there, and he wasn't paying any attention. He walked right out in front of me, mm -hmm. and. Uh, Well, we had the horns and all that stuff disconnected before you wouldn't accidentally give yourself away. Mm -hmm. Hit it, you know. And, yeah. And uh, I sat down on the brakes and we put that spare tire over here on the right side. Okay. Where we could run that angle on out the back and carry mm -hmm. two litter casualties. Why well, he he was coming down through here, at least fixing half chow, and mm -hmm. he wasn't paying no attention. And this two and a half ton was coming in here, and I was coming here, and he was coming down here, and he was he got caught, and that's spare tire that I mm -hmm. moved over on the right side hit him and knocked him down but mm -hmm. it didn't hurt him. I nearly got stopped for hit him. And uh, close call, huh? Do what? Very close call yeah. with for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got it close enough that 
Mm -hmm. It knocked him down, but it didn't hurt him. Okay. All right. When it got stopped, uh, he wouldn't. Like a, like a highway was here, mm -hmm. two and a half ton was coming in here and turning. I mean, mm -hmm. He was coming down out of a building, coming down yeah. here to get chow, and he just stepped right out in front of me. Yeah. And I brushed mm -hmm. the bumper on the truck that was pulling on the road, mm -hmm. and uh, still. That spare tire that I hung on the right side got him yeah, and knocked got him. him down. Yeah. Okay. So where did you um, after that happen? Where Where did you go after, um, next uh, towards Italy? You said you went out and around, back around. Well, um, we had to. Uh, I had uh, objectives that we're supposed to get each day, mm -hmm. and. Uh, you had to stay in communication with who's on your right side and who's on your left. Okay. Old, uh, uh, oh, what was his name? That, it was... Patton. Patton, yeah, he was on our left. Okay. I was in the 7th Army, that, and, and down below that, after we got so far in our, uh, French had a little armory in there, but I couldn't trust them too far. Mm -hmm. and they was dumb when it come to fighting a war. Mm -hmm. He'd, they'd uh, like they. Built that mag magnet line. Mm -hmm. They had these under the ground, dug under the ground, and had a, a drive that you went back in there, mm -hmm. and it was over you. And they, they took the Germans that had straw and stuff in there for them to lay down and sleep on and, okay. and you could drive back in there and we set up aid station back in that mm -hmm. and uh, you had to come out and you come out and you got out and you come around below it and, mm -hmm. and went across and I had a took four men for squad litter bears to bring out where I couldn't go with a truck or close to the line that you could get before they retreated back mm -hmm. they got back far enough that they'd have the road zeroed in for mortars and okay and uh, 88 that's 88 artillery shell okay and they did you get close to a con weren't you close to a concentration camp did you at one time I was yeah talk to us about that a little bit well, I forgot the name of that camp. That's okay. Is, that, is, is it big, on your map there? Big. I know is Auschwitz and Defense and Buchenwald. Mind. They were against three divisions of Germans. That was pretty rough in there. 
Okay. So, um, with the concentration camp, um, what what did you, what did you experience um, being well, near that? They were starved to death. Mm -hmm. German didn't have nothing to feed them, mm -hmm. and uh, I captured a, a German motorcycle, mm -hmm. and it had one of these motorcycle bags that they what did you call them? Sidecar or, or yeah, that I, I took it off of the the back because on account of having that where I carry them two litter cages on there, well, we had to put the spare tire and everything on the right side. It run out the back, come right across mm -hmm. by, behind the. You driver and one man mm -hmm. up with you, and then they they get. I've had them many as three, three or four on the bumper and setting up on the hood, where I could. Barely see, see enough to drive, mm -hmm. and that uh, when we would get to where we had information that they needed back the the back, uh, we generally get it to the. Officers in charge, you know. Okay. okay. Is there anything else you'd like to talk about? Well, where were you when the when the when Germany surrendered? Uh, I was right in there fighting with them and. Uh, They'd come down, they was in the mountains, or the end. They'd come down on the highway and stand there with their arms up, mm -hmm. like that. And uh, they sent me back out to pick up the mail at the headquarters. Day and we got down there and a bunch of them. I don't know, six or eight of them, I forgot now how many it was, come down off that mountain and stand down the road with their hands up. Okay. And I got, I was right at the end when, when they were surrendering. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the guys went with me to pick up the mail. He was scared to death. And, and they come down and they sitting there with their hands up. And uh, I said, right here's where I get me a bunch of prisoners. <laughs> so I stopped and he said, don't stop, don't stop. I said, yeah, I'm gonna get me a bunch of prisoners right here. And I got to, they, I put them on the Jeep. You didn't have you didn't have any firearms, did you? No, I didn't have no firearms, nothing. Okay. And the other boy said, "No, I said let's go, let's go." I said, "No, right here's where I get me some prisoners." Okay. So what did and you do next? What did I do next? Well, uh -huh. I loaded them on the jeep, carried them down to headquarters, turned them in. <sighs> I got down there, I was, I was pretty good to them because I didn't have no gun. They had their guns, <laughs> pistols. So you have, the, they're your prisoners, but they have the guns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you still managed to make it down there. Yeah. And uh, 
like I said, I, I was really good to them because I didn't have no gun or nothing, and, mm -hmm. and they. I got them on the jeep and carried them down there and turned them over to the guys. I had a mm -hmm. place fenced off for yep. where they were keeping the prisoners. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was, <laughs> like I said, I was good to them. I didn't have no gun or nothing else. And, and I turned them over to these guys that had a place fenced off for, for the prisoners and mm -hmm. they got there and I, I turned them over to this guy that was was uh, keeping the prisoners there mm -hmm. and one of them he was he was a officer the, I don't know, I don't know what rank he held, okay. but anyway, he thought he ought to have a little privacy. He's, he was an officer and everything, and mm -hmm. they booted him in the rear end a few times. And, told him to get in there with the rest of them. He thought he ought to be, mm -hmm. not go in with the privates and non-commissioned mm -hmm. officers. They... Then you, you then you came back on, what was the, the ship that you came back on? Uh, Queen Elizabeth? Yeah, I come back on Queen Elizabeth and went over on the Navy transport. Okay. Took us 15 days to get over there. Come back on the... Queen Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth and we come back in five days. <laughs> but we was done scheduled. We was going to spearhead the attack on Japan. When we got to the stage, we was... We got to, we was to leave San Francisco mm -hmm. the 15th day of September, spearhead the attack mm -hmm. on Japan. Okay. And uh, they, after they dropped those two big bombs, mm -hmm. One, you know, and what was it, the next day they dropped yeah, about a week later. I, I forgot the exact date. Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And boy, mm -hmm. they didn't want no more of that. Mm -hmm. That that tore them up. Mm -hmm. So yeah. did they end up sending you uh, to Japan? No. No. So okay. dropped them. Dropped them. See the two yeah. atomic bombs. Uh huh. And. Boy, they they surrendered okay. quick. But and then, and we then had, I had them. We was going to spearhead the United States attack on the mainland of Japan. Mm -hmm. But after you, after they surrendered, they just discharged you where you were. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they after. That that ended the war one day that surrendered. Okay. So what did you do after the war? After the war? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I came came back to these, uh, what was that camp? Arkansas. Well, I can look it up. It, it was it was on your discharge papers, but okay. but but after you got out of the out of the army, what did you do? Well, I 
Right. Well, I know you came back to to Carthage. I come back to see you for once. And that you was year old, and I never had seen you. Well, you eleven months old. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else you'd like to talk about? War's a bad thing. Yep. Looks like people could use enough common sense to, with all the equipment and stuff we got this day and time. Mm -hmm. They know to give in or get blowed off the map. Why? You have to get to that before they make up their minds. So mm -hmm. it's a bad thing. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, if there's anything else you'd like to talk about, um, yeah. Yeah. Good. all right. Anything you want to talk about, Harold? Well, I mind it. I think it's going to be a little bit different, or, or, or be separate. separate. All together, all different. Right. I was yeah. on the ground. And, Use up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Mr. Gentry, for your time, and thank you for your service uh, yeah. to the United States. Yeah. It's, uh, like I say, war is a bad thing. Mm -hmm. And But if we hadn't come out with those atomic bombs, mm -hmm. No telling how long it had lasted. Yeah. But when they put that second open did up, mm -hmm. exploded it, boy, they, they didn't want no more of that. Yeah. And it war quickly. That's right. All right. They surrendered. <laughs> and we was all glad of it because we, we got orders to go home. Mm -hmm. Fort all right. Well, if I wound up Fort McPherson, Georgia, I think's where I got my discharge. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir.